Jesus, in his grace, came and rescued us, and all that we have comes from him. What's up, guys? Jeff and Jeremy here, another episode of Five Minute Fatherhood. A uh, fun question today from our homeroom community, and that's how do you handle an entitled child? Now, I would first say, how do you, that means how do you handle every single person in the world? <laughs> Because yes. it's literally, you know, all of us, adults included, are entitled children. Um, hopefully we've grown in our discipleship, but that's the point. That's the point, as I think what I'm saying is it's a, it's the mm. default settings of humanity, right? In the same way you open up a phone and it has default settings, entitlement is the default setting of sin, of the curse, of death, of decay, because the antithesis of that is thankfulness and the gospel, right? Mm. Uh, the opposite is the good news of Jesus, the declaration that he has come, lived and died and rose again, brought new creation, and that you are only indebted and thankful for that, and that every Everything's a gift. That's the opposite of entitlement. So, um, and that comes later, right? As the gift that you receive in life when you uh, start following Jesus. So, yeah. What would you say, Jeremy? Though practically, how do you how do you kind of handle that? Yeah, you guys. So we have an epidemic, really, of growing narcissism in our culture, and a lot of this came from uh, ideas about parenting that really were popular, especially like in the '80s. Uh, and in yeah. the 90s, they basically said, if your child has incredible self-esteem, is what we called it, right? Then if they think they're amazing, uh, then then you're doing an incredible <laughs> job as a parent. <laughs> uh, and you guys, the, the Bible could not be more against that as being the primary goal. It's really important that kids have a certain level of confidence, for sure. But that totally. that is the, the difference between confidence and pride. There's a very thin line there. And if you don't, if you're not using the gospel and you're not really uh, helping your kids understand a fuller context of who they are in the, in the family, in the community, then, then, then probably narcissism and entitlement is almost inevitable from the confidence you're trying to pump them up with. And before you know it, you have this incredibly entitled child, and you, know, you, can, you can win awards for that uh, as a parent, um, and your kid <laughs> will not only suffer, but all of their relationships will. Um, so it's not healthy, and it often does not lead our kids to Jesus. So if you're starting to to notice this happen with your ch- children, and a lot of them are just naturally entitled, and so uh, you know it's not necessarily always what we're doing as parents. But one thing you want to you want to begin to do is train them to serve others and expect them to serve. Um, you say, look, you you are blessed to be a blessing, and so we expect you to do hard things. We you give your kids real responsibility and hold them accountable. For, for really following through on those responsibilities and help them to serve people, especially if they're feeling entitled, help them to serve people that they might see themselves as more important than, right? Their younger siblings, for example, um, or if there's others that are around in your life, like really train your children to, to be servants and work with them, help them see you serve. And then when you're telling them the story of the gospel, you know, make sure that they understand that, that the story of the gospel begins with us in slavery, like we didn't, we did not earn this. It's really important that we understand. Uh, it, you know, one of the things that, where this really became real to our family is in uh, Deuteronomy chapter five, uh, the second list listing of the Ten Commandments. When it talks about the Sabbath, uh, one of the things that God says is, "On the Sabbath, remember that you were slaves, and I brought you out." And so, one of the stories that that God expected the Israelites to tell their children every single week was, "Remember, we were slaves in Egypt, and we were freed." Like so, there was a sense of the story yeah. that we're identifying with isn't I'm awesome. I've always been awesome, you know, and that's the beginning and that's the end, uh, which is where what a lot of sort of Western parents sort of teach their kids. But it's important that that we we help our kids understand we didn't deserve anything, guys. We were rebels against the Lord. We were slaves to our sin. We we were in desperate need of, of rescuing. There's nothing we could have done to be freed ourselves. And Jesus, in His grace, came and rescued us. And all that we have comes from him. And so that gospel foundation to their lives uh, is really important. But oftentimes when kids are little and you're teaching that story, they really need to experience that and live that out through a life of service. And so the gospel really collides with their internal motivations when you are presenting your kids with an opportunity to serve, uh, serve the family. Uh, You can always start there. We have a whole, like, uh, one of the things we did in Homeroom was like, how do you create sort of a whole culture of service in your own kitchen, which I just love using that as sort of yeah. like 
ground zero for how to train your kids to serve. Um, it's such a practical place to go that we have to eat every day, clean every day. And so that's a great place to begin to help your kids work out that entitlement. Um, that's where I would start with a lot of kids, but then, you know, move into what is the story you believe about yourself, about reality, about God, uh, and train your kids kind of both in both ways. But yeah, Jeff, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I would just add two things. And the first one is, um, yeah, you know, thankfulness truly is the antidote. Um, and, you know, it even the scriptures even go so far in Thessalonians to say that this is God's will for your life, that you would be thankful. So it's actually like so paramount and central. Um, and so, yeah, so we do something as easy as, you know, kind of a, a little piece of uh, part, not parchment, I don't know what kind of paper it is, the cardboard color paper that's on like a roller in our dining room and we just, you know, or a chalkboard and we just write every single night at dinner, a couple things we're thankful for because you can't be thankful and entitled at the same time. Those can't coexist. Um, mm -hmm. And when you're thankful, it kind of boots it out of you. Um, and then two, like Jeremy already said, like, yeah, just serve as a team. Uh, one way that we do that really that's that I've noticed with the kids is we really, really call them to help us serve when people come over. So we're all getting the house ready. We're all setting the table. You know, I do give them jobs when people come over that I want them to greet everyone and stuff like that, you know, and of course they don't do it perfect, but, um, you know, creating that atmosphere where we're, Hey, we're all serving and it's a joy and we have this house to use it and to bless other people with it. So stuff like that, I think is really, really important and, uh, uh a big deal for sure. 